Now, seismologists claim that much of the damage that's been caused across Christchurch has been caused by a phenomenon called liquefaction. A couple of days ago, we had never heard of that term, but everyone speaks about liquefaction, and indeed, you can see it everywhere around you because this quake was relatively shallow, just five kilometres below sea level, and uh, what it's mean, what it's meant really is that a lot of that soil has turned to mud. Liquefaction is a phenomenon activated by medium to severe intensity earthquakes in loose sands below the groundwater table. The pore pressure increase generated by the seismic action reduces the frictional resistance of the soil and this may lead to severe damages to buildings and lifelines. In just moments, roads turn to quicksand, swallowing cars and swamping suburbs. This process, called liquefaction, has left much of the city a soggy, crumbled mess. In some cases, the impact can be devastating. Whenever liquefaction occurs, the economic and social impact is huge. In May 2012, Emilia Romagna in northern Italy was struck by an earthquake sequence that produced extensive liquefaction phenomena. Terre del Reno, a municipality of 10,500 inhabitants, suffered the most severe consequences. The official cost to repair private, public and industrial buildings was 293 million euros. About 123 million was spent on private dwellings. Half of this is attributable to damage caused by liquefaction. The holistic assessment of liquefaction risk for communities is the goal of Liquefact, a project funded by the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme, number 700748-2016. Yeah. The project is carried out by a consortium of 11 partners, including eight academic institutions and three private companies from six different European countries. Hello and welcome to Liquefact. My name is Professor Keith James and I am the project coordinator and principal investigator responsible for modelling the impact that a liquefaction disaster event has on a community. Earthquakes have a major impact on those directly affected by them. On a personal level, earthquakes cause loss of life and injury to people, as well as long-term anxiety and stress. The University of Pavia and UCENTER Center are leaders of Work Package 2, which has two goals. The first is the development of liquefaction as a map in Europe, and this activity is called macrozonation. And the second is defining the framework for the development of liquefaction hazard maps at a urban scale. And this activity is called microzonation. Macrozonation is an activity involving the definition of maps of liquefaction hazard of major European countries. And this is achieved by combining existing information about the expected seismic shaking with information on liquefaction susceptibility of soils using geological and hydrogeological information. A GIS-based catalog is used to provide information regarding past liquefaction occurrences in Europe from previous earthquakes, which will help to validate the liquefaction hazard map. Microzonation is the definition of a framework to compute liquefaction hazard maps at a urban scale. 
Microdonation maps will be calculated at four different testing sites located in Italy, Turkey, Portugal and Slovenia. The urban centers in these four countries have been chosen on the basis of availability of geological and geotechnical information, presence of liquefiable soil deposit, where liquefaction manifestations occurred in historical earthquakes, representativeness of different geological settings and taking into account the density of the population. The University of Porto and the Liquefact project leads the works that aims to evaluate the structural liquefaction resilience to assess the vulnerability of residential and public critical infrastructures like governmental offices, hospitals, police stations, lifelines, etc. All them to be characterized in terms of their fragility in case of earthquake-induced liquefaction damages. These infrastructures are conditioned by a large variety of factors like ground motions that can be amplified and their shaking periods in increase, tilting, settlements that can be differential due to the homogeneity of the ground and the complexity of the architecture and lateral spreading of the soils. The elaboration of a vulnerability model by direct and independent approach taking account all these factors is very difficult and time consuming for common design and quality control practice. So a new mechanism approach a displacement-based assessment soil foundation structure interaction procedure was developed at the University of Porto for different soil structure types, considering the larger uncertainties and minimizing the requirements of sophisticated dynamic models in very dy demanding software codes. One of the lights came down and when my friend was going on the waves that it going so high, she felt the light bulb kick her leg. We got out screaming and it was all flooding and everything, even outside the building it was flooding. And then we just saw the reflection bubbling up as we were trying to get out of the building. And then we ran out from the building and we felt that big aftershock. If action isn't taken to prepare for and recover from an earthquake event, then the consequences on the community can be devastating and can last for generations. The Liquefact project is investigating how communities can reduce their vulnerability to an earthquake-induced liquefaction event and can improve their speed of recovery. The Liquefact project has developed a resilience assessment and improvement framework which can help communities better understand their vulnerabilities to a liquefaction event and to develop the plans that will help them to recover from the event as quickly as possible. The Liquefaction Reference Guide is a software toolbox incorporating all the outcomes of the project. This enables various users, such as urban planners, insurance companies and lifeline managers to carry out risk assessments and estimate losses. Our method is basically will be implemented for individual building as well as for a city or region and it includes a state-of-the-art methodology that has been developed by our Liquifact consortium partners. Um, the procedure basically has uh, three main uh, protocols, uh, protocols for hazard analysis and protocols for risk analysis, as well as protocol for mitigation analysis. Uh, within hazard analysis, uh, the end user can evaluate the impact of uh, earthquakes uh, uh, and the level of liquefaction threat and this is used as input for the second protocol in order to evaluate the effect of liquefaction on, on, uh, on the city, on the building stock and then under mitigation analysis protocol end user will use a library of integrated mitigation solution in combination with the result of cost benefit uh, in order to develop their own uh, mitigation framework uh, that can be applied uh, uh, for the case uh, uh, for their case study. The risk assessment protocols defined by the project are validated against a number of relevant case studies taken from a worldwide context. Uh, validation uh, it means that uh, we are testing uh, the um, procedures uh, implemented uh, by other groups uh, by comparing them with real example of 
earthquakes that have caused uh, extensive liquefaction. For this purpose, we have established specific agreement with the Emilia-Romagna region, the University of Tokyo and the University of Canterbury in New Zealand that uh, uh, are supporting us uh, in the study of uh, very uh, big uh, earthquakes that uh, uh, are uh, remarkable examples in the literature. The principle is to learn from the past. We want to use uh, the data collected after the earthquakes. Normally there is a huge amount of data uh, concerning uh, subsoil conditions, uh, structural characteristics, uh, damage and economic losses that are available and uh, represents uh, uh, real experiments that uh, are useful for checking the predictive capabilities of the model implemented in the project. A principal part of the project is dedicated to the experimental assessment of ground improvement techniques. Traditional and innovative methods have been investigated and sophisticated laboratory and in-situ tests have been carried out. We can say that uh, uh, this work package is the experimental heart of the Liquefact project because uh, uh, we will carry out uh, uh, tests at different scales in the lab, at a small scale on small specimens, in the centrifuge on small models and on site where we will use a mega shaker to uh, create, to generate pore pressures and check the effectiveness of the uh, solutions we will try to implement. In this sense, we are mostly concentrated on innovative solutions like uh, induced partial saturation and the adoption of horizontal drains. But um, from a numerical and uh, theoretical point of view, we are also checking the possibility to use more conventional uh, solutions. And uh, uh, we will sum up all this information in guidelines which will take advantage of the experimental evidences and of theoretical and uh, numerical interpretation of the results to come up with simple but reliable design tools for the engineers. Physical modeling tests have been performed using the seismic geotechnical centrifuge of the ISM Geo Laboratory in Bergamo, Italy. A physical model is a small-scale reproduction in laboratory of full-scale phenomena. Scaled models simulate in a controlled environment extreme loading up to failure with reduced costs and realisation times compared to full-scale tests. A geotechnical centrifuge applies an artificial gravitational field to the model by rotating it, reproducing the real gravity field. The earthquake is applied to the scale model by a shaking table, which transfers the vibrations to the model through a specially designed coupling mechanism. The models for the Liquifact project represent 15 metres of deep sandy deposits. The models are equipped with microtransducers to measure poor water pressure, displacement and acceleration in the soil during the simulated earthquake. Liquefaction triggering and ground improvement techniques such as vertical and horizontal drains and induced partial saturation have been simulated using centrifuge tests. Test results allow the team to analyse the effectiveness of ground improvement techniques. Numerical models are implemented to interpret the results and develop design criteria. The applicability and efficiency of mitigation techniques have been demonstrated on site with a full scale field trial performed by Trevi with the collaboration of Emilia Romagna region. The selected area for the test is located in Pieve di Cento Municipality, close by the Reno River. This area is characterized by shallow sandy deposits, which have been strongly affected by liquefaction during the earthquake of 2012. So we generated uh, an artificial quake uh, to induce uh, uh, high pore pressure in the soil 
The same operation was uh, repeated in three different areas uh, in uh, virgin soil uh, where we in installed uh, the horizontal drains uh, and finally where we installed pipes uh, for the uh, induced partial saturation. We installed a number of uh, transducers in the soil, uh, so uh, geophones for the vibrations uh, and the pressure transducer for the water pressure and the data collected by the data log will be later processed uh, to uh, compare uh, the response of the original soil or the virgin soil with uh, the area where uh, the horizontal drains uh, and uh, the pipes for the induced uh, partial saturation uh, have been installed. The lessons learned from Liquifact are synthesised into guidelines directed at multiple end users. Recommendations on risk assessment coupled with the Liquifaction Reference Guide software toolbox provide the methodology to predict losses and plan mitigation from a holistic point of view. The guidelines on mitigation are intended to support engineers with up-to-date procedures and criteria for the design of ground improvement techniques in conjunction with the upcoming renovation of Euro codes. As we saw in New Zealand, Liquefaction is a natural phenomenon which, if we do not prepare for, can have a major impact on people and buildings. The research done by the Liquefact project has helped us better understand the risks posed by liquefaction and evaluate the potential of mitigation actions to improve community resilience. Whilst the work of Liquefact will not stop earthquake induced liquefaction occurring, the tools that we have developed should enable communities to better prepare for and recover from an earthquake-induced liquefaction event. Thank you.